In my opinion, if you want to be really effective in Cursor, it's the first prompt that makes the biggest difference. Whether you're tackling an integration like a payment provider, or you're refactoring, squashing bugs, or asking Cursor to do you a security review, you can be a lot more effective with these three prompting strategies. Let's take a look. First one is the Q&A strategy, and this really helps a model to understand your requirements better. So if we're tackling a payment integration, well, what kind of features would you like within this integration? What kind of payments are they? Are they subscription payments, one-off payments? Do you need invoices generated? Aligning yourself with the LLM from the very beginning, perhaps creating a document from this, will set you up for success. The next one is called the pros and cons strategy. And have you noticed that LLMs can be kind of biased if you point them in a certain direction? So with the pros and cons strategy, we could do something like, let's say we wanted to figure out which email integration provider we needed. Well, we could ask through the pros and cons strategy, the LLM to do uh, more of a balanced review. Uh, and also, how would this integration fare with your particular code base? Is it suitable? Is it difficult? What is the cost, etc. I wanted to quickly let you know about my two flagship Coding with AI courses. The first course teaches you how to build a complete full stack SaaS app using Cursor. You'll integrate essential tools like Stripe for payments, AI services, and email, all while building with Next.js, Superbase, and Vercel. It's everything you need to go from zero to production ready web apps. The second course is for anyone who wants to build a native mobile apps with Cursor. You'll learn how to create a fully functional app with in-app payments, push notifications, AI features, and email integrations. And you'll finish by deploying your app to the Apple App Store and Google Play. And the best part, you don't need to know how to code. I'll teach you how to think like a product engineer and guide the AI model to build your app with you. If there's ever been a time to learn how to build with AI, it's right now. So come join me. And one of my favorite ones is the role prompt strategy. And I find that we can really enhance the output from an LLM if you ask it to wear the hat of, for instance, a security advisor or a database expert or an SEO expert. Let's take a look at these in more detail. Let's look at the Q&A strategy. So this is fantastic for API integrations and things like app features or database design. Let's switch to Cursor. The prompt is, I need to implement Stripe payments. Before providing a solution, please ask me relevant questions about my specific requirements and constraints so that you can give me the most appropriate implementation advice. And this is really valuable because there will be things that you haven't really thought of that the LLM will come up with. The other reason it's important is because this is a two-man team. Cursor Agent is the developer and you are the, for instance, the product engineer. So you need to align your objectives from the first prompt. So scrolling from the top, what are you charging for? Is it premium features, subscription tiers, one-off payments, usage-based billing? This is quite detailed from the get-go. Are there fixed pricing, tiered plans? Where in the user flow should payments occur? After registration, do you need a billing dashboard? Should payment status affect what AI model features users can access? And it's talking about AI models because I'm building an AI app. So it's using my code base as further context to be able to ask these questions. Look at this one. Are you new to Stripe or have you worked on it before? So interesting. Do we need GDPR, for instance, in Europe? And then from the setup, do you already have a Stripe account set up, etc.? So I can spend some time answering these questions. I can spit out a document and we can keep that document as basically our project implementation plan. When would we use the pros and cons strategy? So this is really about comparing, deciding on things like AI models, email integration, payment providers, and it's really the balanced advice that I love about this. And the second thing that's really interesting is unearthing factors we have not considered. Jumping into Cursor, this is the prompt. I need to implement transactional email into my app. Analyze the pros and cons of resend loops and mailer send. 
Now, I don't have to specifically uh, mention these companies, but obviously as a developer, I kind of know what is, uh, what is out there and sort of my top three, four, five options here. So I'm giving it a bit of direction to begin with. Then I'm saying consider factors like scalability, UX, ease of development and maintenance requirements. So now Cursor Agent is going to be doing a web search and comparing just what I asked it to do. Three different solutions, uh, compatibility with my project, ease of use, um, pricing, feature integration, etc. Okay. So based on my research, I'll provide you with a comprehensive analysis of resend loops and mail ascent. Executive summary for your Next.js AI chatbot application, resend emerges as the strongest choice, followed by loops for specific use cases, while MailerSend serves as a solid enterprise alternative. And then we can dig into the detailed analysis with resend pros and cons, being developer first, React email integration, excellent Next.js integration, competitive pricing, and there are a few cons here basic visual editor, etc. So that's for all three. And then we get a recommendation matrix. When to choose resend, when to choose loops, when to choose mail ascend. So for loops, if your team includes non-technical marketers, and this is really interesting because loops has a no-code email builder. So non-technical users will use the email builder. Implementation, the recent came up as the easiest and the fastest to integrate. Here's all the pricing, side-by-side -side comparison, security and compliance, and then the final recommendation. So that's the kind of research that took the best part of two or three minutes uh, with a strong starting prompt. Something that I have been looking into myself and I've spent several hours doing that. So this is a much better option. This one I use most frequently, and I often use it for security-based prompts, such as looking for security vulnerabilities, as well as performance, design, and SEO. Let's jump in and run the prompt. You're a bounty hunter and ethical hacker. Review my app to identify any security vulnerabilities, potential edge cases, or implementation flaws. Be attentive to common OWASP security risks, Let's continue on this. Generate a security.md document. And then generate a security.md document with a table of the results ordered as critical. So what I tend to do is have cursor rules basically set up for this particular purpose. Whenever I do API integrations, anything data related or maybe sensitive uh, data on a dashboard, I will always do the implementation, then run the security, security review, then make the changes, then run the security review one more time. Okay, we have our documents. And I'm just going to uh, open this, open the preview so it's nicely formatted. And it looks like we have three critical, four high, six medium, and four low. And look at this, guys, this is fantastic. Severity, location, OWASP category, and impact. Now, this is just a starter kit, so I'm not too worried about these. But I love that the impact actually talks about uh, why it's a vulnerability here data corruption, information disclosure, brute force attacks, weak authentication. And that weak authentication exists on my 
or actions. So that's quite a serious one. Brilliant. So now I can decide on the next plan of attack and uh, I can just ask the model to go through step by step, resolve the ones I wanted to resolve, then run the security checklist again, uh, and then good to go until I do my next integration, such as a payment or an email or uh, mutating data, that kind of thing. Right, and if we scroll to the bottom, we've got a conclusion here, risk score 8.5 out of 10, pretty high risk, okay, brilliant. And I love that we've got our date, January, although it's not January, so I'd have to change this to today's date, which is in July. Here is our security document that we can get back to later. Now, following on from these three strategies, you can combine them. You can combine uh, the role prompt strategy with the pros and cons strategy, so maybe there is something specific that you need advice for, but you want to compare various solutions. Uh, you can combine as many as you like. You only become more effective as a product engineer slash product manager slash vibe coder, okay? But this is something that you definitely want to keep in your back pocket when it comes to security. Always run a role prompt strategy as a security expert after you manipulate data, API routes, API integrations. I hope that is useful.